Now, Yeomans um, framed something that was probably a, a bit of a precursor to, um, to the principles of permaculture and really created a, something of a framework for the prioritisation of design of our landscape. And interestingly, um, called the scale of permanence. And um, number one there is something called climate. And um, what the relevance here is that um, number one is the hardest thing to change. And number eight is the easiest thing to change. But what's interesting from this scale of permanence is that uh, soil has the greatest effect on climate and climate has the greatest effect on soil. It's the opposite ends of the spectra. And it's been our enormous human team effort, in, um, which has been fantastic. I mean, it's an unprecedented human effort in um, trying to destroy our climate that's, um, that's, uh, that's done a pretty good job. And um, if, you, if you go to West Virginia, um, you can sort of see where they do a bit of a job on uh, land shape as well. Um, to extract the coal there, they just, um, if there's a mountain, well, <laughs> no problem. We'll just get rid of that mountain and, uh, and you go. But it's interesting um, that, uh, you know, like water is something that uh, we have fixed amounts of water that are actually in our hydrological cycle. Just as an aside, I was talking to the great Brock Dolman. I've only met Brock the other day. What a lovely fellow he is of the Water Institute. He did a study. He did, interviewed um, people across the United States and, um, to determine their hydro literacy, their uh, literacy on water issues. And he found that only 10% of those interviewed actually knew any part of the hydrological cycle, which is pretty, like, he would ask, you know, what do you know about the hydrological cycle? People didn't even know that rain was part of it, you know. Anyway, um, I digress. Um, water is something that we have a high potential to, um, to actually correct through modification of land shape um, in building um, small earth dams, in building small berms that actually harvest water off the landscape and then redistribute it. The climate we only have a very small influence over directly. We can plant trees, um, which will increase the amount of precipitation and collection of precipitation. Um, that's something that we can do, but by and large the climate that we're dealt with is what we've got. Um, with roads, we can manipulate the, the direction of roads um, in our design so that they um, not only follow um, the appropriate direction, like along ridges and all of that sort of thing, but also that the roads can help with the water collection. Think of a road as a catchment. A road is a, you know, if it's a paved road, 90% of the water that hits a paved road runs off, is not infiltrated. So they're very, very, very powerful means of actually harvesting water. And that's one of the reasons why we don't want roads in our national forests and everything, because they have that, um, that catchment um, efficiency and they concentrate water. But when we design them well, we can actually use them as very powerful water harvesting features. And uh, that's something that we do a lot of in, um, in our work. Trees, as I mentioned, uh, they fit in very well. Buildings and subdivision. Buildings, um, our placement of buildings is, uh, is um, something that we take a bit of care of. And subdivision, what I mean by that is that um, we divide our sites up. Like where we put our fences is something that um, we can do quite easily. Um, or with relative ease. But the simplest thing to modify and to destroy is our, um, is our, are our soils. And like I said, you know, if we don't have good soil, then um, you know, it's good, good soil is the foundation of every civilization. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong history buffs, but there's no civilization that has survived where it's destroyed its soil. Hmm. There's, um, there's no 
there's, yeah, there's no precedence there. Um, <laughs> I don't think we want to go there. Yeah. 